I got up to leave this morning and have you know, I need a new headlight bulb. So I'm gonna go to the gym and after that, pick up some new bulbs. Doing a quick check to see if I need the high beams and I don't. For now, just the low beams. And I'm gonna check my fog lights too. I think they don't work. Yeah, my fog lights aren't working either. So, I'm gonna pick up some of them too. So I'm gonna start on this side. And I looked in here and someone left some cutters in here. Hmm. So this side is easier because the battery isn't blocking it. All right, so let's see if I can get this cap off. It is coming. All right, so with that off, I'm gonna try and twist it out of the way. I think that'll give me enough space. All right, so that's where the bulb lives and I'm gonna remove this little black connector here. And now I gotta take off this retaining arm. So what I'm gonna do is press down on that, on this here, I'm gonna press it in that way and down and that will remove it from holding the bulb in. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. So I'm gonna swing it out. And now, uh, come on. And now the bulb is free. And note the orientation. So it's gonna go back in like this. It only lets you put it back in one way. So I'm gonna compare it to the ones I got. And they look the same. So it's the H1 bulb. So here's the new one going back in in the same orientation that I took the other one out in. All right, so it's in there. Let's see if the arm places it back up in its... Oh, come on, man. All right, so it is back in there. I'm gonna put this connector back on and then test it real quick to make sure it works. Well, looks like I got it in there right, so I'm going to replace the one on the driver's side. So I'm going to try and do the same thing on the driver's side. As you can see, the battery is right there, and I don't know if I'll have enough space. I'm going to give it a shot like this, but if it turns out to be too difficult, I'll take out the battery so I'll have more space. As you can see, I was right there. I could almost get it off, but I decided to go ahead and take the battery out. That should give me a lot more room. And I don't know if that's battery acid or water. So I'm gonna go get some gloves. All right, so now that's a lot better. So I can pull this off. Come on. And release the retaining arm. I don't know if there's an official name for it, but that's what I call it. It doesn't seem to be going up under the catch as easy as I would like, so I'm going to enlist the help of my screwdriver. There we go. So with that free, the old bulb is out. So now the new bulb can go in, and I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little knob right there. And that knob corresponds with the flat side of the bulb. So when I put it back in, it's able to seat all the way in. So let's... And that's a better view of the arm down without my hand in the way. 
I'm going to put the cover back on. All right, to put it back on, note, there are three thick tabs and one thin one. So you have to line them up properly. And I think the thin one, at least on my car, is over closest to the fender. And, then, and it is pretty tight. And then I put the cap back on the other side. There we go. That gummit. So this is not a good connection because that's as tight as it goes. And it still, it still wiggles. So I will be addressing that sooner rather than later. Let's we'll see if those headlights work. All right. I'm glad I did that because I'm not gonna get off work until it's dark. And that's gonna make my ride home a lot better. So a little while after replacing the headlight bulbs, I started to have these issues. All right, I'm driving the WRX and the radio now cuts in and out. And if you look closely, the backlighting there where the odometer is, it flickers. So something's going on electrically and I'm gonna have to figure out what it is. And if you're observant, if you look closely, the battery light was flickering. And I have my suspicions as to why. So, I'm gonna go pick up a new terminal for this, try and upgrade it. But I did not check the positive. Wait a minute, this looks like it has been messed with too. So, I may be doing both of them. I've always liked these style terminals. We'll see if I can get them to work. So I'm gonna take this one off first. And now this one, which is very rusted. And I imagine that this is not the OEM one either. So the positive side has two wires that need to terminate and the negative side has two as well. Um, I'm gonna start with the positive side. So I temporarily put the positive terminal back on. It's just sitting there loosely. Make sure to have some leverage to force against to take that nut off. And it is ah, rusted on there pretty good. Ah, there we go. I looked up the OEM terminal for this car and it looks like this. So mine is definitely not original. It looks like some that I could have picked up at the auto parts store. Take that off, take this off. So this is what we're working with. And I'd like to have more length, but let's position the new positive terminal and see how much length we need. So it's gonna be an uphill battle to get this cable to stretch, to go inside of this. Now I could run a bolt into this but that's not the way this is intended to be used and I don't wanna do that, even though it would probably work. So I'm gonna go pick up a battery terminal that will be better suited for the way that these already are. But before I go, I'm gonna make sure I can get the negative side to work. You know what, that is awfully tight. It looks nice, but that is an awfully tight fit. Yeah, so I might just end up replacing both of these with a different type. But I did give the fancy one a shot because I was gonna have to cut the old terminal off anyway. If I have any issues with the harness in the future, I will probably just get the OEM harness like I have pictured here. But right now, my only problem is the terminal. 
So I'm glad I did this. Although I could get it to work, it's not ideal because I'm coming up with some interference. So I may be getting the same style terminal for the negative and the positive. So now I'm off to the store. After a quick trip to the parts store, I picked up this style. They'll allow me to attach the existing terminals to this side here. So let's put them on. And this is a quick comparison of the positive terminal. Everything about the new one is better except for the size of the threads on that. I wish it were a little bit bigger. It's not ideal, but it'll get me by. And at first glance, this negative terminal looks a lot better too. I know it's gonna work better because I did a test fit and it fits pretty well. This one, as you know, was really loose. And as you can see, had corrosion on the inside, which is not good. So hopefully this was my issue. I also picked up this terminal to put the negative wires in. And I don't know if it's the exact right size, but I'll see if I can make it work. I have a hydraulic crimping tool that I picked up for a wiring project a long time ago. I want to make sure I get all the strands in. Don't want any stragglers. All right, got them all in. Here's my hydraulic crimping tool. This thing is awesome. So let's see if I can do it right. Well, that's done. I don't know if that is exactly right, but it's better than it was before. And this go on here, but also, again, I'd like this to be a little tighter fit, but it'll work. I'm not a fan of it, but based on the way the other one was connecting, this will be better. And this terminal, while it's not the worst, it could stand a little bit of cleaning. So I'm gonna clean it and this one. That's a lot better, just a quick cleaning so that it has a little bit better contact. So now I can assemble everything using the new terminals. So that is the finished product of the negative side. And that is the finished product on the positive side. And when I, as I was cleaning up, I forgot to put this back on the positive terminal. And I think it's a good idea to have it. So I'm gonna put it back on. There. So now that's the final product. So I got everything back up together and I started the car up and it started up a lot quicker. Let me see if it starts up quick this time. I am happy to report that after over 200 miles of driving, I have not had any electrical issues. And the quick startups was a, a welcome bonus. If you'd like to follow along as I continue to improve and modify my 04 WRX, hit subscribe. If you would like to see the things I've already done, check out my playlist. Thanks for watching. Take care.